So good to be with you guys today. Thank you so much for coming, making the trip. I know Idaho Falls isn't the easiest place to get to, but we're glad to have you in our hometown. Uh, today I'm going to share some recipes for success. The conference theme of ProfCon is learn, prepare, share. And I hope that throughout this event you have opportunities to do that over and over again. I'm going to specifically share some of what I consider to be recipes for success. Those can be recipes for student success, recipes for your student's success, recipes for your success. Uh, thank you for taking time to go with us yesterday. We had a blast. Rich already talked about it, so I won't go into more detail, but I'm grateful for the memories we were able to make together. Um, everyone knows that middle school is tough. As the little guy, it's really tough. And I weighed 75 pounds going into my eighth grade year at a different middle school. My parents moved me between seventh and eighth grade year. And my mom, she had this really good idea that the best way to make friends fast would be to run for student body officer right away. <laughs> and she said, you can, you, I'll help you prepare your speech and uh, she's like, your name's Stu, so you can create a, a, a stew recipe for your speech for student body. And so my recipe theme today comes from that experience. Our school mascot at the high school level where I grew up is a sputter. And I grew up in Washington State, not Idaho, but we made David Letterman's worst mascots. Anyways, um, <laughs> Potatoes was one of the ingredients. I mean, it had to be in the stew, right? And I went to put it in, and I had a brain fart. I could not remember for the life of me in that moment what the potato stood for in, in my speech. And so I just went, potatoes stand for potatoes. And I threw it in, and the whole audience laughed and laughed and laughed at me, not with me. <laughs> and... Uh, it's tough giving a talk in front of your peers, okay? So I appreciate the laughs that you're, you're laughing with me, hopefully, and that we're able to have uh, a lot of fun and that you're supportive of the peers that are going to be speaking in the other sessions as well. Um, but where I'm familiar with being the little guy, I've kind of learned to embrace it. And Stu Kent is enjoying being the little guy. I f we feel like we're really big now. If you've been with Stu Kent for the last 10 years, like, hey, we're getting big compared to where we were, but we're still really small compared to Pearson and McGraw-Hill. And I like to tell people, some of you may have heard this, we believe at Stu Kent that what Under Armour was to Nike and Adidas, that's what Stu Kent is to Pearson and McGraw-Hill. And we've got a long ways to go. Thank you for being a part of the ride with us. Um, Lindsay Jo, my wife, she has a recipe, and when we brought on new customers in the very beginning days, we would share the, Lindsay's recipe as a thank you for joining the Stu Kent team, and then uh, we would talk about Stu Kent's perfect pedagogy here. This little formula, I'll go into more detail on it later. That's our recipe. Um, and we need to look for recipes, ways to solve problems. If you look at these headlines, just skimming, universities are going to continue to suffer. The reckoning is here. College is in crisis. Uh, why more Americans are skipping college. Experts predict 25% of colleges will fail in the next 20 years. Right? They're, they're, those are scary. That's not very exciting to hear. I think where all of you guys are in the system, you're working in this system that's getting beat up so badly by the media, it's time to go, wait, what are we doing to fix this problem? How are we addressing this? Are we paying attention? What can we do to fix it? Um, the traditional higher education system must evolve or die. As a, as a society, I believe we can't afford for it to die. For uh, the vast majority of students, young Americans, to have the goal of reaching a, a college education, moving away from home, having that rite of passage, coming into adulthood experience, just for that alone in society, we need, the system, we need a higher education system that's powerful, but that works, that provides the level of um, 
experience that prepares a student for the real world. Uh, our mission at Stukent is to help educators help students help the world. So when I see those headlines, I go, yeah, but wait, watch what Stu Kent's gonna go do to help all these educators. Because, you know, when, you, when media, the media aims at a system, no, no one person bleeds. It's easy to make the system bleed. No one's mad at you as the writer for making the system bleed. So they can pick on the system and beat up the system a lot, right? Um, the educators, professors, you guys don't feel like it's your fault. The university, they say, hey, we're, we're working hard for you. We're not the problem. And the publisher, they go, hey, we're not the problem either. We've been working hard for you guys for a century. All right? Everyone has a part to play in the system being picked on this hard. And if we all just keep pointing fingers the other way, that's not going to solve any problems. So we should look inward at what we each can do, right? But I personally believe that the publishing, the publishers and the publishing system is a big, big part of the problem. You as educators are busy, and you're, you guys have lots on your plate. Getting good material, up-to-date material, that prepares you to teach your students what they need to be on job and powerful on day one after graduation, are the publishers doing a very good job at that? I would say that's an area where they can really improve. Stukent can still go and improve in that regard, but that's a specific aim that we have. So how do you learn slash retain information, information the best? We got five options here, folks. Raise your hand if you're more number one, audio. You're like, yeah, I don't read. I just listen to the audio books. Raise your hand. I want hands raised. OK, very few in this audience. OK, as a professor audience, I thought this would be interesting because it could be unique. Who's more visual? The, OK, so more hands on visual. Uh, you're going to hit play on the video if it's there. Kinesthetic, number three. Who are the hands-ons? OK, got some of those in the audience. More than one, less than two. Number four, reading and writing. The readers and writers, OK. And now that we're to the bottom, and you can see that there's an all of the above option, raise your hand if you're the all of the above type. You're like, I, I, I need a mix. OK. Good. We'll, we'll talk about why I, we, I believe that we can, Stu Kent can be a number five provider. We can help in all areas there. Uh, they say, they say, okay, that knowledge retention looks something like this. 10% of what they read is, 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 is uh, remembered. 20% of what they hear is remembered. 30% of what they see. 50% of what they see and hear. 70% of what they say and write. 90% of what they say and do as they perform a task. Okay. This, this information has been questioned a lot because when it was originally shared in 1969 by a guy, a, a great professor named Edgar Dale at the Ohio State University, uh, for my Ohio State friends that like me to emphasize the the, um, Edgar Dale created this cone of experience that explains that we learn and retain the most information when we get to experience, not just read or hear the information. Uh, when you ride a bike, you, there's a saying. It's like riding a bike. Once you've done it, now you're going to remember it. You've been there. You've felt it. Can you imagine you guys teaching someone to ride a bike, and all you did is sat down in the living room with your seven-year-old and said, okay, Today, you're going to learn how to ride a bike. Let me read this book to you about riding a bike. <laughs> OK, now go outside. Your bike's out there. Go ahead and figure it out. That doesn't make any sense, right? When you go to, when you go to culinary school, this is the screenshot of the home page of Institute of Culinary Education. You know it's all over the screen, video after video in the background? Students doing. Can you imagine if you taught students how to cook and all you did was lectured? 
And they never got to be in a kitchen. They never had knives. They never had an apron. It doesn't make any sense, right? Too often, in a lot of other aspects of education, that's what we do. So at Stu Kent, we have our recipe, our formula for what we consider to be the perfect pedagogy, okay? And this formula is one that I made up, and I'm no mathematician, so it wouldn't actually work for solving any problem, probably. Uh, but let me explain, okay? So courseware, simternships, and good educators. We believe it, it takes that mix Courseware, simternships, and educators for your students to have a good ped pedagogical experience. Within courseware, it's amplified or multiplied by the right authors. We try to team up with specific authors that have a bend for applied learning. They're not interested in just teaching theory. They have some industry experience, or they've got a co-author with industry experience that's putting into practice the things that they're writing about. Video content provides the vi visual experience for those stu students that learn that way. We, br we bring in real world uh, that way as well through our expert sessions with video content. And we're working on ways to get better at staying more current with our video content. The next... Uh, you in our big algebraic amazing formula is, oh no, I'm gonna have a potato moment. What's my you? <laughs> updates. Okay, updates. The publishing world has a really hard time staying current. And one of the reasons isn't because of the print cycle or because they have so many authors. It's because when they wrote their contracts with their authors, they never even promised they would let the author do a second edition. When we sign up our authors, we literally tell them before they sign up, and I have had eye contact conversations with our authors. You understand, we want you to update this beginning like nine months, right? And one year from now, we're gonna go on to version number two. That's a really important part of what we do. And I think that's so critical in helping education keep up and catch up with the industry they support. Okay, and then I have minus FL in the formula. That's minus the fluff. Okay, got to take out what some of our authors have called Akawini. Yes, we're getting some claps for that. We're, we're concise. Professors, you're going to hear, or I hear this from professors all the time, but the students don't read anyways. I just use the simternship. Why don't the students read? Because you don't make them. You don't punish them if they don't. So yeah, why would they? When I was in school, when you guys were in school, when we were in school, if you didn't read, you were going to fail, right? So I, I push back a little bit when I hear that. I believe that we as educators are a big part of the problem as to why students are not reading. Okay, on the simternship side, we're giving real world experience. It's, it amplifies the simternship when it's, we're simulating real platforms that the students will actually use on the job and they can tell and say in an interview that's what they're doing. We provide the hands on experience and they can uh, have a re repetitious learning experience. There's a lot of uh, studies that will share that we learn better when we hear it over and over again. Try memorizing something by only reading it once. And last but not least, in our simternship section of the formula is certification. We're providing the students with a reward for their work. A lot of studies around that too, right? Incentives. Okay, last but not least, we need the educators. You guys as teachers, we want to provide an experience for you, and we're working hard to get better at that remembering that the very first part of our mission is help the educator. Um, and there's another F there that might be a potato moment unless it comes back fast. Um, it's not gonna come to me. But we got a lot of cover and only eight minutes left, so here we go. Okay, um, 
That, you guys, is what I believe is the perfect pedagogy. When you can mix all of those things, it can be really powerful for your students. They will retain this information, and we've heard it over and over again. We're getting, I, I got my internship at Google. I got my, my uh, job at Adobe, and I talked about my internship experience in the interview. In the marketing world, we love you as marketing educators. We've now created, we've applied this formula, this recipe, in all of those subjects. Another one I'm really excited about looking at in the near future is AI for marketing as a subject. Doesn't every marketing school need that now? Yeah. Who's going to be first, Sue Kemp, Pearson, or McGraw-Hill to create that? <laughs> All right. I'm Jeff Larson, I'm a professor of marketing. I'm Stuart Draper, I'm the founder of Stukent.com and a co-author of the textbook Internet Marketing Essentials. A sim internship or simulated internship gives your students hands-on experience without asking them to take any real-world risks. I believe this wholeheartedly, Stukent is the future. The future. The future. The, this world of simternships that we're building is one that we feel is a big part of the future of education. We've done it for marketing. We're going to continue to do it for marketing. And the ones that we've done for marketing, we're going to continue to make better. Okay, so if you've been with Stu Kemp for five years, as in Jaws' case, as he told me at the beginning, he's seen it evolve already, and it will continue to evolve. Uh, we're all, as we add more, we believe that marketers are better at their job when they have the experience of being an accountant, when they have the experience of doing HR and sales and supply chain and the other aspects of business. So can you tell your colleagues, do you mind helping us out in that way, being ambassadors for us a little bit and saying, hey, you should check out, consider using the simternship that, that, that Stu Kent's building for your subject or has built for your subject. Okay, here comes the next one, guys. Hey, Abby. My name is Scott. I'm really excited to talk to you today about our product marketing manager position. Hi, Scott. Glad to be here. I see that you're getting ready to graduate with a degree in marketing. Why did you decide to get into this field? Well, I took an intro to business course during my first semester where I did a program called a Simternship. It's basically a simulated internship. It gave me the chance to work on a lot of real world projects in HR, supply chain, sales, finance, and marketing in a risk-free environment. So it's like a business simulation? Exactly. The Simternship helped me discover my passion for marketing. So that's what I majored in. I had a lot of fun crafting the right messages for my target audience. It didn't even feel like homework. So my professor, Dr. Miller, encouraged me to take our university's principles a marketing course. Luckily, that class also featured a simternship. So I was able to get a feel for the kinds of things I would do as a marketer in the real world. I did market research, launched a product, created promotional plans, worked with simulated distributors and more. That's great. Most people I interview only have one, maybe two internships on their resume. 
But you have five simternships? That's right. Aside from my traditional internship, I also did simternships in digital marketing, consumer behavior, and market research. Would you tell me a little bit more about those experiences? Sure. My favorite was probably the digital marketing simternship because I got to create different kinds of campaigns, including search, display, and shopping ads. The simulation imitated real-world ad building tools like Google and Bing ads, and I got to manage tens of thousands in ad spend and generate hundreds of thousands in revenue. I also enjoyed the market research simternship because I essentially got to be a research analyst for a semester. I created moderators guides and survey instruments similar to Qualtrics tools. I also analyzed primary and secondary research, reviewed focus group recordings, and visualized data from survey responses. That's impressive that you've been able to do so much meaningful work. How do you feel like your experiences will benefit you in this new position? My internships not only helped me round out my skill set, but they improved my confidence too. I have experience doing most of the tasks listed in the job description, and my resume includes metrics from the internships to demonstrate the effectiveness of my work. Thanks for sharing that, Abby. I'm really impressed with everything you've done up to this point. I'm going to go ahead and schedule an in-person interview later this week. We'll be in touch soon. Hello? Hi, Dr. Miller. This is Abby. I just wanted to let you know that I got the job. Abby, that's great news. Congratulations. Thanks. But I have to thank you first, Dr. Miller. Your course helped me discover my passion for marketing, and I'm really excited to put everything I've learned to work. You're going to be a wonderful marketer, Abby, and I can't wait to see how you'll change the world. I wish you the best of luck. <laughs> Our video team does great work, don't they? So, um, can you help your students by showing them this video so they can catch a glimpse of what they can use, how they can use their simternships to help them get internships and jobs? I don't know that they all leave their simulation experience and are ready to say all of that in an interview. It's going to take a little bit of help from you guys. Hopefully this video helps as well and can be something we can repurpose for that. A uh, big part of Stu Kent is the people recipe. We have a set of core values that our, that our team strives to live. And uh, this is a meeting we had. I took a picture from our own conference room just a couple days ago in our last minute all hands for the ProfCon event. So thank you to all of the team. Let's give them a round of applause. Um, they, they are fantastic. I'm so grateful for all of them and what they do. We have new cooks in the kitchen at Stu Kent. Rafi comes to us from LinkedIn Learning. Liz and Kevin both come to us most recently from McGraw-Hill. They've spent time at Pearson and Cengage as well in Kevin's case. So just outstanding new team members. Very excited for what they're going to do. Rafi has a lot of experience with AI and machine learning, and we're excited about what that means for our simulations in the future. Uh, thank you so much to our authors. A lot of them are here today. The ones pictured are the ones that are here. So please take a minute and say hi to them. Uh, if you're ready to make a difference and want to get involved, at stukent.com, you can apply there. Um, technology is evolving education and always has, right? Um, we have seen it. How teachers used to say, remember this, you can't use your calculator because you, won't, you might not have your calculator when you need, when you need it, right? Well, what, we always have calculators now, right? Uh, right now, when you look at AI, so many of the headlines, Sal Khan and his amazing TED Talk, I hope you'll all go watch, talks, points out the scary headlines for AI. It says things like, New York City schools ban chat GPT amid cheating worries. Alarmed by AI chatbots, universities start revamping how they teach chat GPT and the death of education, right? Um, Sal's speech is called How AI Could Save, Not Destroy Education. Um, I'm so thankful to Kent 
Kent is a pro was my professor that taught me digital marketing. Kent Lundin is his name. The name for Stu Kent stems from there, for those that didn't know that student, Stu Kent story, and it plays on the word student, right? Um, one of the things that Kent did was he stood up in the beginning of class in 2006 and said, I don't know digital marketing, or in that case back then he probably said online marketing or internet marketing, but it's important, you're gonna need to know it, let's learn together. Okay. And then when we had questions and, he, and we stumped him and he didn't have an answer, we could, he would say something like, does anyone know this? If they don't, then let's go Google it and we'll learn together. I'm so thankful he was willing to do that. That 2006 experience is what I hope you guys start doing with AI for your students. Rather than take so much time worrying about the cheating side and the other downfalls of AI and scary things about AI, think about how you're going to use it for good to help your students get, go be ready for the, the workforce. And you can do that. If you go Google chat GPT prompts for marketers, HubSpot's first response, 190 chat GPT prompt mar prompts marketers should use. I hope you guys as marketing professors will go learn those. Get familiar. Uh, champ, chat, prompt, chat GPT prompt engineering. This shows how fast industry moves. There's already full courses on how to be a prompt engineer. In three years from now, it might start getting in university catalogs, right? So don't wait for the catalog. I share all sorts of tips here for a recipe for staying current. I'm not going to have time to go through it all, but I want to point out one. Don't wait for the catalog to change. Guess what the name of the class was that I signed up for where Kent Lundin taught us digital marketing? It was called database marketing. And he's like, instead of teaching you junk mail and how to, how to manage a database of uh, customer addresses, we're going to talk about digital marketing. So... Find ways around the system like that that can be helpful to help us not have the problem we've had, where we have the headlines that we're having. In closing, I hope, oh, wait, 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 I have to share one more thing. I, I know I'm over time, so I'm like trying to see what I cut here. But I got to share one more thing about AI. Stu Kent's going to do some very exciting things with AI, and we've already started our work on it. One of the things that we're going to be able to do is provide feedback to you as educators. Another thing that we're going to be able to do is provide feedback to your students, relevant, up-to-date feedback that says, here's where you can do better in the next round. But it can be a lot more sophisticated than what we're able to provide today. Right? Uh, tutors uh, can be much more sophisticated. And in, in Sal Khan's talk, he gives you all sorts of examples. So go look that up. That TED talk by Sal Khan is a must watch for every educator. Uh, in closing, I promise we'll continue to stay on our mission to help you, help your students go help the world. Uh, we do that in all sorts of ways. Thank you so much. If, if we get a chance, I'd love to meet in person over the next couple of days if we haven't already. And uh, I'm on LinkedIn as well. So thank you guys.